All right, so I'll show how to replace the top engine torque mount on the Ford 500. This is a brand new mount, and even the insert here is brand new. And you can see just how squishy and soft those mounts are. And that is why on these cars, these mounts wear out so fast. If you're watching this video, you probably already know that, but maybe you don't know it's a very common thing. You can replace this mount, and within a fairly short amount of time, it will be completely cracked again, and it will need replaced. Where the engine bolts to here, the engine will be able to slam back and forth. Some people think there's issues with the transmission because they'll feel that hard slamming, and they'll think it's slamming in to gear, and it's just the engine mounts. I think it was just the geometry of the design. For whatever reason, they just don't hold the engine very solid and it just destroys the mounts and then also with this mount being so weak that doesn't help anything so i have made a solid polyurethane replacement bushing put in here that will add rigidity to this make it last a lot longer than this flimsy one you can see just with a pinky i'm able to completely flex it all the way to the side with no issue at all super duper flimsy so yeah this this polyurethane replacement bushing will greatly increase the uh, rigidity of this mount and prolong its life versus just one of these regular rubber ones. And I just wanted to show how to replace it for some people that maybe haven't done it before or aren't super mechanically inclined. Removing this whole mount is actually kind of difficult because getting to these bolts is quite a pain in the ass. I don't have a car here. I don't have access to a car to show you. I've worked on them before. I've replaced these mounts before, but I don't have a car of my own. But yeah, the hardest part is probably going to be removing this mount if you decide to go that way. There is a way you can do it without, well, there's a few ways you can do it without actually removing this and you can leave this whole thing in the car and just remove this part right here. Now, if you, if you do remove the whole thing, you could use a hydraulic press and press this bushing out. You could try to use something like a ball joint remover if you have the right adapters to push on the outside of the bushing and leave room for the bushing to come through whatever you could do that you could do that off the car or on the car if you have the right adapters so another way you can do it is take a hacksaw blade or even a reciprocating saw or a sawzall and cut through just the steel insert sleeve you don't want to cut this aluminum outside part at all but just stick this through here and saw through just that sleeve and once you saw a little groove through there that will take this press fit bushing and allow it to collapse a little bit and when it collapses a little bit then you can hit this out really easily and that's something you could do in the car so that's one way to do it that's a fairly easy way to do it and then installing this bushing is really easy you can do it by hand the bushing will come with silicone grease and you'll just lube up this outer side of the bushing here, lube up this inner bore, lube up this surface here where the bushings will be touching, and then you can literally press it in by hand, press both rubber halves in, and then just press the steel sleeve in. All right, so my camera decided to stop filming that. Don't know what filmed and what hasn't. I haven't went back and checked, but I essentially just sat this here in the vise to where the aluminum edge was touching the vice jaws but the steel sleeve still has room to come out the bottom and then I just used a hammer and a punch and went worked my way around the edge of this bushing and slowly hit it out of there so that is one way that this could be replaced if I didn't get it on film also you can use a hacksaw blade and stick it down through the bushing and cut through this outer steel sleeve don't cut out into the aluminum mount itself but just through the sleeve and once you've cut through it you'll allow that steel sleeve to collapse with the the gap from the blade it'll collapse a little bit and that will re release the tension of the press fit and you'll be able to hit this out a lot easier which if this was mounted in the car if i left this in the car that's probably what i would do i would leave this all bolted up because these bolts are really hard to get to and i would leave this all bolted up use the hacksaw blade cut through it and then hammer it out really easily and then just put the new bushing in by hand that would be the easiest way to go i believe so now if there are any burrs where you caught the edge of this that are like sharp edges now there's a casting ring in there too from where this mount was cast 
might not be a bad idea to sand that down as well even though it's right in the center which will be where the bushings meet it really shouldn't cause much of a problem but you just want to get rid of any sharp edges that may be there kind of clean it up before you put the new bushing in all right so installing the new bushing is the easy part for this mount you'll get two rubber bushing halves and one steel sleeve and then you should get grease with the order as well the grease you want to put inside the bore of the mount you want to put it here on this edge and then the same on the other side and then you want to grease all of these outer edges of the bushing where it will slide in there you want to grease the face of it here where the bushings will touch each other inside there and then you really want to make sure you get some in this inner bore here where the steel sleeve goes through and that's the same for both halves i'm not going to grease this one up because this is just as a demonstration and this is still a good bushing that can be sold I might grease the center pin up because it's kind of a pain to get back out with the metal against the dry rubber. So super easy, doesn't matter. There's no direction to it, doesn't matter. Just center it in there. These bushings are directional where they have this slot and you wanna make sure that slot is like to the front of the car and the back of the car. I purposefully used this size of steel tubing so that it's a little larger than it needs to be so that you still have some room in there for the bolt to move a little bit so you can center it just like you can with this mount. And this is aluminum in the center of this one where this is a steel sleeve so it's stronger as well. So one bushing half in there, completely seated. The other bushing half, it's in there. And then I will put a little bit of grease on the steel pin so that it's a little easier to get in and out of there for me because the dry rubber against this dry metal grips pretty well. This is silicone based grease. You wouldn't want to use petroleum based grease. Petroleum based grease can degrade rubber over time. Silicone based grease is the best option there. And then just press that in. Until it's flush and then there you go. Now I normally make these mounts out of 70A shore hardness polyurethane. 70A shore hardness is pretty good for just a daily driving car that you just want an upgrade from the factory rubber. But if you want something more firm like an 80A or a 90A, which would be more of like you don't care about engine vibrations, you just want the most firm mount you can possibly get. I can make that for you, but just in general, I do the 70A, and if you want something more firm, just let me know, and I can make that for you for sure. So I'm trying to show that this one's a little more firm than the factory one, but where the way this bushing is made with two halves, when it's not bolted in, the bushings, as you flex it, are wanting to move out, but when you have it bolted in, obviously, it'll be nice and solid in there, but um, you can definitely tell it's more firm. But like I said, that steel tube is wanting to slide out of there as I do that. But once, like I said, once it's bolted in, there's nowhere for it to go. It'll be nice and solid. But this does still have some flex. It does still have some give. It will still absorb vibrations. It may cause slightly more like engine vibrations into the car because it is more firm than this one. This one obviously is very, very soft. So at an idle, this one, when it's brand new, is great. It sits there and it absorbs all the vibrations because it's super soft. But then as soon as you, you know, give it gas or this thing starts to get some age on it, it really flexes it and it allows it to move way too much. So this is like a nice happy medium to where it'll still absorb some vibrations, but it's way more secure and way more durable and should have a lot longer service life than this OEM bushing. And there you go. Now you've got a brand new solid polyurethane mount for your car, which should be way more durable and hold the engine in place a lot better than that OEM bushing. I can make these in pretty much any basic color, green, yellow, purple, blue, whatever. Just message me through my Facebook page, DRW Poly Bushings, or you can email me at drwbushings at gmail.com if you don't have Facebook, and we can uh, work out what color you want, and I can get you one of these made and sent to you.